Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's I feel privileged to be here after 20 years after winning the Nobel Peace Prize and to be speaking with you. 20 years ago, I was awarded this honor and this honor of the Nobel Peace Prize was very conducive to my work because it provided me with many platforms through which I could ensure that the voices of the Iranian people could reach the whole world and allowed me to speak about the challenges and problems faced by the Iranian people to the whole world. That was an extremely valuable prize for me. Today, if you allow me, I would like to say a few words about the current situation in Iran. Because my life and the life of other human rights activists in Iran is dependent on the circumstances in Iran. If we have democracy in Iran, our conditions would improve. Therefore, the fate of human rights defenders is directly related to the situation in their own respective countries. That is why I don't want to speak about myself personally. I'd rather speak about my country, Iran. In Iran, unfortunately, the human rights situation is deteriorating every day. I'm only going to relate to you what happened in the past year. In September 2022, a young girl was killed on the streets by the government security forces. And that was like a powder keg moment in Iran. And in over a hundred cities throughout the country, people took to the streets and they said, we don't want this regime anymore. And this anger of the people stemmed from the multitude of demands that they have had for many years. The Islamic Republic of Iran came to power in 1979. And sadly, it started violating human rights from the very first day it came to power. We do not have independent courts in Iran. Our parliament is not independent. All decisions in Iran are made by one person only, and that is the supreme leader. And in the constitution, it, the leader, supreme leader, has been given absolute power. In other words, dictatorship in Iran has uh, been established since 1979 legally. And since then, since 1979, there's been opposition to this dictatorship, especially from women. Because the first thing this religious dictator did was to attack Iranian women. It started with the dress code, the hijab. And then it continued with other discriminatory laws against women. The people of Iran soon became very disillusioned with this regime, and they have tried their utmost to topple it. And in 2022, they could no longer tolerate it. I have to stress, people's demonstrations was very peaceful. They did not have any weapons. They weren't just standing up 
to a government that was bullying its people and oppressing the people. But how did the government respond to people's legitimate demands was to fire bullets at them. And within three months, over 600 protesters were killed, 80 of whom were under 18 years of age. The reason I say at least is because, unfortunately, the government never publishes statistics. And the statistics that reaches us is through the families of the victims. So it's always approximate. They have been using pellet bullets as well, as a result of which many protesters were blinded. And I can say only one hospital in the capital, Tehran, alone has had to operate on 500 people who were blinded by these pellet bullets. And moreover, the people are not even allowed to hold funeral ceremonies or give a proper burial to uh, their loved ones who were killed by security forces. Otherwise, they'd be arrested. They have arrested many people. Our prisons are full to such an extent that prisoners have to sleep in the corridors because they have no space. They don't have, uh, the prisoners are not fed because they are um, over the capacity in prisons. The people are becoming poorer and poorer because of the wrong policies of the Iranian government. Now, bear in mind, Iran is a very rich country. But instead of spending their money on building hospitals, building schools, what do they do with it? They uh, manufacture weapons and they export weapons and they interfere in other countries, especially in the region, which has uh, led to many conflicts within the region. In the recent demonstrations, for the first time ever in Iran, even high school girls, they left their schools and joined their parents to protest on the streets and they were chanting the slogan, we no longer want this regime. They took off their headscarves and burned them in public. And the, what did the Iranian government do in response? They attacked these high schools with uh, uh, chemical gases and as a result of which um, one girl was actually killed because they even poisoned them with these chemical gases and many of them were hospitalized. Doctors were banned from treating the injured. Instead, they were told to call the police and say, oh, we've uh, just uh, received another uh, casualty. So the police would come and arrest the injured. But many doctors resisted. Only six doctors, six doctors alone were killed because they tried to treat the injured. Again, I repeat, the people's demonstrations were peaceful, yet they were killed. Nevertheless, the government issued many death sentences for several of these protesters. Seven of them have uh, already been executed, whereas based on the constitution of Iran, people have the right to take part in peaceful uh, demonstrations. They, and they don't even need a permit for that, according to the constitution. However, The problem is, in Iran, we are facing a government that has no respect whatsoever for law and order. The 
There is a very high level of embezzlement in Iran. Corruption, administrative corruption is sky high. However, we remain hopeful. When a 15-year-old girl, knowing the risks to her life, takes to the streets and protests, that means we have a society that is awake. We have had a cultural revolution in Iran. The Iranian people are past the level of violence. Now they want to peacefully uh, topple this government. The Iranian people will be victorious. And I promise you, this is the last time I'm speaking to you about the dire situations in Iran. And hopefully next time I will speak about our victories. Thank you very much.